Good day. Today we're going to deal with where is the graph increasing and decreasing. We're also going to deal with where is the graph concave up and concave down. We are also going to deal with local minimum and local maximum. We are also going to deal with second derivative test. And we're also going to deal with point of inflection. We'll deal with the exact definition and how we find the point of inflection. If you want more videos on cubic graph, I've got a playlist on cubic graph. The playlist is found at the end of this video. So, let's begin. Alright, first let's talk about where is the graph increasing and decreasing. So, how do you tell whether the graph is increasing or decreasing? Notice, this graph is increasing because when you follow this graph using your fingers from left to right, you will notice that the finger is going up. And this line is decreasing because when you follow the graph using your fingers from left to right, you will realize that your finger is going down and not up this time, meaning that the graph is decreasing. So, the shape of the cubic graph is either this way or it is this way. So, this particular cubic graph has got this shape. So, let's look at this particular cubic graph for instance. Where is this particular cubic graph increasing? Notice, when you follow the graph from left to right, you will notice that your finger is going up, meaning it's increasing, but only up to this point. So, when we reach the turning point, it starts going down, meaning that it will decrease from this point, up until another turning point. So, therefore, the graph is increasing from this part until the turning point, and here it decreases. Then after the next turning point, it starts increasing again. Because when you follow the graph from left to right, your finger is going up. So, in this case, the x value of the turning point is negative 2. Because here we've got the turning point, negative 2 is to 1. And the other turning point is right here. So, the x value of the turning point is 0. Because the turning point is 0 is to negative 2. So, Notice, before this turning point, the graph is actually increasing because if you follow the graph using your fingers from left to right, your fingers going up, meaning the graph is increasing. And after this turning point, it starts decreasing until the next turning point. And after the next turning point, the graph starts increasing again because if you follow the graph using your fingers from left to right, your fingers going up. So, it starts increasing before the x value becomes negative 2. And it starts increasing again after the x value is 0. So, dealing with this part first, it increases before the x value becomes negative 2. Therefore, we can say x is less than negative 2. And here it starts increasing again after the x value is 0. So, therefore, we can say x is greater than 0. So, for the answer, we'll just say x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than 0. So let's talk about where is the graph decreasing. So it decreases from negative 2 until 0. So therefore, we'll just say the x value is between negative 2 and 0. So it starts decreasing after the x value is negative 2 and, it's, and it stops decreasing before the x value is 0. Therefore, we can say the x value is between negative 2 and 0 because it starts decreasing from negative 2 and it stops decreasing at 0. So, because it's between, we have to put x between and we have to say negative 2 until 0. So, it's from negative 2 until 0. So, that is how we answer this question using the graph. And let's just say we did not know the turning point. Let's just say this was point A and this other turning point was point B. So. What we'll do is that if we don't know the turning point, we can literally tell them it starts decreasing between A and B. So we can literally say X is between the X value of A and the X value of B. You still get your full marks. Just before I continue, if you want to be cheated whether it is online or physically, whether it is the situation where you are struggling in maths or whether it is the situation where you are good in maths but want perfection, Take a screenshot or save these details. Whether you are studying Cambridge, which is the UK curriculum, or whether you are studying NSC, which is the South African curriculum, or IEB, or native courses which start from N1 to N6, or any curriculum you're doing no matter which country you're at, we offer tutorials. We've got lessons and practice sessions five days a week, 
we also give you tests once a week so that we can check your improvements. So, before we use the mathematical method without the graph to determine where is the graph increasing or decreasing, first you need to understand that in analytical geometry, for instance, if we've got a straight line graph, let's call this y is equals to 2x plus 8. Notice, this graph has a positive gradient because it's increasing from left to right. So whenever the graph is increasing from left to right, it has a positive gradient. So the gradient will be positive. But if the graph is decreasing from left to right, your gradient will be negative. What is the significance of this? The significance of this is that the first derivative actually tells you the gradient. For instance, here we know that the graph is increasing from left to right. So it means everywhere here the gradient, the first derivative will be positive. So your first derivative will be positive, which means greater than zero. And it also increases from zero. So meaning that because it increases, your gradient, which is your first derivative, is positive. However, between two and zero, the graph decreases meaning that your first derivative, which is your gradient, is negative. So, first of all, you have to memorize that wherever the graph is increasing, your gradient, which is your first derivative, is positive. Wherever the graph is decreasing, your gradient, which is the first derivative, is negative. Because first derivative is our gradient. So, so far we know that if the graph is increasing, the first derivative is positive. Whenever the graph is decreasing, the first derivative is negative. So, let's look at this question. If the say for which values of x is f increasing, we know that when the graph is increasing, the first derivative is positive. So what you want to do is to find the first derivative. So let's find the first derivative. So the first derivative is f prime x is equals to 6x squared minus 30x minus 36 so this is gonna be the first derivative and you will tell them that the first derivative is greater than zero you get a mark for it so let's substitute into the first derivative so if you substitute you will get 6x squared minus 30x minus 36 is greater than zero so we're telling them that the first derivative must be greater than zero must be positive and since everything here is divisible by 6, we'll just divide by 6. So then this becomes 5x minus 6. And notice, this is actually just like algebra. It's actually inequalities in algebra. So when you're solving inequalities, first of all, you factorize. When you're solving quadratic inequalities, and we'll end up having 3 and 2. The sign of the middle number goes to the bigger number. And then the sign that comes here is the sign that this will multiply by to give you a negative. So what does this have to multiply by to give you a negative? It has to multiply by positive. So therefore it means that this part will be positive. So this is still greater than zero. And then from here, whenever we're doing inequalities, we have to say critical values. So our critical values is negative three. So not negative three rather, but three or x is equals to minus 2. So critical values are what will give you 0. So here we want what is greater than 0, but we, we first have to tell them what will give us 0. And then from here, what you'll do is that you'll draw a number line. So the smaller number goes there and the larger number goes there. So you will always have negative, positive, positive. It will always be the case. This is how to cram inequalities. It will always be negative, positive, positive. So, I won't really explain why do we get this. Because you can get total inequalities without even understanding what does this mean. So, what you will do with these things that you drew is that the question says that it must be greater than zero, meaning that it must be positive. Because if A is greater than zero, we are saying A is positive. So, the question is saying it must be positive. So, what you will do is you will check which group is positive. So, the groups that are positive is group 1 and group 3, meaning that group 1 and group 3 is what the question wants because it says it must be positive. So group 1 will always be x is less than 2. 
and group 3 will always be x is greater than 3. So you will have to memorize that in group 1 x will always be less than this value and in group 3 x will always be greater than this value. That is what you memorize. So the first thing you have to memorize is that you will draw a number line and you will have plus, minus, plus and the smaller value goes there and the larger value goes there. The second thing you memorize is that if the question wants it to be positive bigger than zero so if it wants it to be positive it means it's gonna be group one and group three that will win and when you describe group one it will always be x is less than and when you describe group three it will always be x is greater than but if it was group two that one you'll always write it this way you'll always write x in the middle and you write minus two and you write three and you'll just put the signs like this so you'll say x is greater than minus 2 at the same time is less than 3. So x is between minus 2 and 3. So every time the outer group wins, you'll write it like this. It will be splitted because the two groups are splitted. But every time the middle group wins, so every time the middle group wins, you'll always write it like this. So because this is group 1, group 2, group 3, you have to memorize that whenever the question says, greater than zero meaning positive it means the outer group wins so because there are two groups it means we'll write it splitted so whenever the question says negative it means the middle group will win and because it's only one group you'll always write it mixed like this so whenever the outer group wins you write it like this whenever the middle group wins you write it like this so if you want to watch a video on how to claim inequalities the video is right here at the top right of the screen at the suggested video so let's just attempt one more question so here is a graph they give they gave us graph and they say for which values of x is the graph decreasing so we know that when it's decreasing the first derivative is negative so therefore let's find the first derivative we know that the first derivative will be equals to negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 24. So this is the first derivative. So we know that the first derivative, so we tell them that the first derivative is less than 0. And then from there we'll substitute. So it means that it's going to be negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 24 is less than 0. Now you have to be careful, whenever we've got negative here, we have to divide everything by negative. So when you divide everything by negative, and also everything is divisible by 3, so we can just divide by negative 3. So if you divide by negative 3, you'll end up having x squared minus 2x minus 8. So the sign of the inequality will also change because you divide it by negative. So when you divide by negative, the sign of the inequality changes. So this is what we have so far. Then from here, we have to factorize. So when we factorize, we know it's going to be x and x. So this is going to be 4 and 2. The sign of the middle number goes to the bigger number. And what does this one have to multiply by in order to give you this one? So it has to multiply by positive. So therefore, it means it's going to be positive. So from here, this is still greater than 0. We can now say critical values. So our critical values are x is equals to 4 or x is equals to negative 2. So from here we have to draw the number line. So when we draw the number line, the smaller value goes there and the larger value comes here. So we know that it's going to be negative, positive, positive. So according to the question it says it must be negative but we have changed it because we have divided everything by negative so therefore this will be our new reference point so the question says it must be positive greater than zero meaning positive so positive is group one and group three so group one is x is less than because group one will always be less than and group two or rather group three will be x is greater than four because in this group x will always be greater than this value while well, it's in this group x will always be less than so we write it split it because group 1 and group 3 1 which were two different groups now let's talk about concavity of the graph so first you need to know that this graph is concave up you can use C to help you memorize 
when c is facing up the graph is concave up when c is facing down the graph is concave down so in this case c is facing up so the graph is concave up this is just to make it easier to memorize concave up and concave down on the other hand this graph is concave down it is concave down because c is facing down so the parabola is either concave up or concave down the cubic graph however has got two parts it, it has one part which is concave down it has another part which is concave up so notice from this point until halfway c is facing down while it's from this point until halfway c is facing up so notice before we reach halfway the graph is concaved down after we have passed the half of it the graph is now concaved up so this particular cubic graph starts from being concaved down before being concaved up this particular graph on the other hand starts from being concaved up and when it passes halfway it now becomes concaved down so some cubic graph starts from being concave down, then it becomes concave up. Some cubic graph starts from being concave up, then it becomes concave down. So notice C is facing up at this portion. And after halfway, C is now facing down. So when it comes to the parabola, the parabola is always either concave up or concave down. But the cubic graph, on the other hand, will always have two portions. One which is concave up the other one which is concave down so i'm sure by now you have noticed that exactly at halfway concavity changes so it will change from either concave up to concave down or it will change from being concave down to concave up so the halfway point where the concavity changes is what you call the point of inflection so the point of inflection is the point where the concavity changes so please memorize this the point of inflection is the point where the concavity changes so it's the point where it changes from concave up to concave down or from concave down to concave up so that is the point of inflection it is the point where the concavity changes so sometimes they can indirectly ask you for the point of inflection they won't say find the x value of the point of inflection they will rather say find the value where the concavity changes then you have to understand that they are talking about the point of inflection so when it comes to the turning point or the stationary point we find it by saying the first derivative is equals to zero when it comes to finding the point of inflection we say the second derivative is equals to zero for instance if they say find the point of inflection of this stuff we know that point of inflection second derivative is equals to zero so in order to get the second derivative we first need to get the first derivative so we'll say first derivative is negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 24 so that is what we have then from there we can now get the second derivative so second derivative is minus 6x plus 6 yep and there we have it then we have to tell them that the second derivative is equals to zero we get a mark for that and then from there it's gonna be zero is equals to minus six x plus six and then from there you can now say six x is equals to six from there we get x is equals to one so if they say find the x coordinate of the point of inflection we stop here but if they say find the point of inflection, a point has got x and y. You have to be careful. You have to make sure you fully answer the question. So if they say find the x coordinate where concavity changes, they're indirectly asking you for the x coordinate of the point of inflection. But if they say find the point where the concavity changes, we're talking about x and y. So they want both coordinates of the point of inflection. So we got the x value how do we get the y value we have to substitute into the original equation when you substitute into the original equation you'll get f of one is equals to so when you put one in place of x here you'll get minus one cubed plus three into one squared plus 24 into one minus eight 
and this should be 18 you can verify with me so it should be 18 so we got the point of inflection or the point where the concavity changes so the point of inflection is where the concavity changes so in this particular case it changes from concave up to concave down at this particular point so second derivative is equals to zero you have to understand that second derivative tells you the concavity of the graph first derivative on the other hand tells you whether the graph is going up or down it tells you the gradient but second derivative tells you how concave the graph is so first derivative tells us whether it's increasing or decreasing second derivative tells us whether it's concave up or concave down so what you have to understand is that whenever the graph is concave up second derivative is positive meaning it's greater than zero and whenever the graph is concave down the second derivative is negative so always remember that whenever the graph is concave up the second derivative is positive whenever the graph is concave down the second derivative is negative and at the point of inflection there is no concavity because it's neither concave up nor is it concave down the second derivative is zero it tells us that the concavity is zero so it's neither positive nor is it negative so it's neither concave down nor is it concave up all right so given that knowledge here are things to memorize the first thing to memorize is that whenever the graph is increasing the first derivative is positive whenever the graph is decreasing the first derivative is negative this is for increasing and decreasing another thing you need to know is whenever the graph is concave up the second derivative is positive and whenever the graph is concave down the second derivative is negative so memorizing these things will make differential calculus easier just before i explain local minimum and local maximum if you are interested in knowing the prices of my tutorials the video that contains the prices is found at the end of this video another thing you need to know is that there's what you call local minimum and local maximum so this part is called local minimum and not global minimum it's called local minimum because it is the minimum value when you look at this section but notice it is not the global minimum because there are still other values that are lower than this part for instance if you look at this part of the graph it continues getting lower than this part so infinitely there are many points that are lower than this part so this part is not the lowest in the graph per se it is just the lowest in this section that is why it's called local minimum so it is the lowest around this section but it is not the lowest graphically because there are infinitely many points that are lower than this part and this part is also called local maximum it's called local maximum because around this point this is the highest point but if we look at it globally in the graph it is not the highest point in the graph because from here this point starts getting higher and it continues getting infinitely higher so there are infinitely many points that are higher than this point so this is called local maximum it is not called global maximum because around this point this is the highest but it is not the highest point in the graph and this is called local minimum because around this point this is the lowest but it is not the lowest in the graph the cubic graph does not have global minimum it does not have global maximum but it has got local minimum and it has got local maximum so let's deal with some questions that they can ask you in the exam so here is a question so they can ask you for which values of x is f concave up in other words they're saying for which values of x is the graph concave up so we know very well that f is concave up when the second derivative is positive greater than zero so for us to get the second derivative we have to get the first derivative so let's get the first derivative so we'll have first derivative is so we'll have 3x squared plus 6x plus 24 
So this is the first derivative. Now let's get the second derivative. So the second derivative is negative 6x plus 6, which was what we got before. So they said for which values of x is the graph concave up? So we have to tell them that the second derivative is greater than 0. So let's solve. So we're going to have... So we're going to have negative 6x plus 6 is greater than 0. So... So far you've got negative 6x plus 6 is greater than 0. And when you take this to the other side, you're going to end up having negative 6x is greater than negative 6. And then what you have to be careful of is whenever you divide or multiply by a negative, the sign of the inequality changes. So if, if it was greater, it will be less than. If it was less than, it will change to greater than. So the sign of the inequality changes whenever you divide or multiply by a negative. So you end up having x is less than 1. So the sign of the inequality change from greater than to less than. So this means that whenever the x value of the graph is less than 1, the graph will be concaved up. So here is another question. They ask you for which values of x is f concave down. So we know that the second derivative is negative when the graph is concave down so in order for us to get the second derivative we need the first derivative so we're gonna have first derivative is equals to 6x squared plus 6x plus 24 so this is the first derivative so now let's get our second derivative so we're gonna have second derivative is 12x plus 6 so is the second derivative and we have to tell them that the second derivative is negative because there is a mark for it so we know that this negative one is concave down so then it's gonna be 12x plus 6 is less than 0 then from here we're gonna have 12x is less than negative 6 and then here we're gonna have x is less than negative half so it means whenever x is less than negative half the graph will be concave down so let's go to one more type of question. So here is the final question. So they gave us the equation of f and they said determine the coordinates of the stationary point. So they said determine the coordinates of the stationary point. So we know very well our stationary points are our turning points. So if they say coordinates, it means they want both x and y. So in order to get our stationary point, we know that the first derivative must be zero. So the value of the first derivative is 6x squared minus 30x minus 36. For one mark, we have to tell them that the value of the first derivative is 0. Then we're going to substitute. So it's going to be 0 is equals to 6x squared minus 30x. So 6x squared minus 30x minus 36. So that's what we'll have so far. So notice everything here is divisible by 6. So we'll have 0 is equals to x squared minus 5x minus 6. And then when we factorize it, we'll end up having so. We just open two brackets and we know it's going to be x and x. And then from here, it's going to be 3 and 2. So it's going to be 3 and 2. So the sign of the middle number always goes to the bigger number. And what does negative 3 have to multiply by to give you negative 6? Negative 3 has to multiply by positive 2 to give you negative 6. So this is the factorized form. So we'll end up having x is equals to 3 or x is equals to negative 2. So these are the x coordinates of the stationary points or the turning point. So how do we get the y value? So, so far for the first x coordinate, we know that x is 3. And then how do we get the y value? So we have to substitute it into the original equation. So when we substitute it into the original equation, so we'll have f of 3 is equals to, so then we'll have 2 into 3 cubed minus 15 into 3 squared minus 36 into 3 plus 4. So this is going to be equals to negative 185. You can verify that with me. So it means that when x is 3, y is negative 185. So that is our first coordinate. 3 is to 185 is to negative 185. So now we have to get the second one. So let's get the second one. So 
the x value is negative 2. So in order to get the y value, we have to substitute it into the original equation. So therefore, we're going to end up having f of negative 2 is equals to 2 into negative 2 squared, or rather cubed. And then this is going to be negative 2. So we'll have 15 into negative 2 squared. This is going to be minus 36 into negative 2. And then this is going to be plus 4. So you can just verify with me it's going to be 0. So it means that when x is negative 2, y is 0. So we'll end up having negative 2 is to 0 as the other coordinates. So then we'll have negative 2 is to 0. So these are the two coordinates of the stationary point or the turning point. So when x is 3, the y value is negative 185. And when x is negative 2, the y coordinate is 0. So now we can proceed to the second question. So in the second question, they said use the second derivative test. So they said use the second derivative test to determine the concavity of f at each stationary point. And then they said then state whether the stationary point is a local minimum or local maximum. So what is the second derivative test? The second derivative test is a test whereby we want to find out whether it's going to be concaved up or concave down. So if the second derivative is positive, it means it's concaved up. If the second derivative is negative, it means it's concave down. So if we want to test at, let's say, point 2, we want to see whether it's going to be concaved up or concave down when x is 2. So what we'll do is that we'll substitute 2 into the second derivative and we'll see whether it will give us a positive value or a negative value. If it gives us a positive value, like let's just say half, then it means that it's concaved up. But if it gives us a negative value, let's say negative half, then we know it's concave down. So we have to find out whether it's going to be concave up or concave down at this stationary point. So when x is 3, is it going to be concave up or concave down? So what you'll do is that you'll substitute that value into the second derivative. We want to find out whether it's going to be positive or negative. So we'll say second derivative when x is 3. So then that will be 12 into 3 minus 30. So it means it's going to be 36 minus 30 and we're going to end up having 6. So you literally tell them the second derivative when x is 3 is greater than 0. So this gave us positive 6 which is a positive value. So the second derivative when x is 3 is positive meaning that it is concaved up. So therefore you tell them that therefore it's concaved up. So we found out that it's concaved up when x is 3. So when it's concave up, it means that part of the cubic graph will be shaped like this. And whenever it's shaped like this, it has got a local minimum. So it has got a local minimum because it will be the lowest around that region. So we'll tell them that therefore this point is a local minimum. So we'll say it's a local minimum. So just remember when second derivative is positive, it is concave up. When it is negative, it is concave down. So the second derivative test is a test whereby we're finding out whether it's going to be concave up or concave down. So just remember the second derivative test. We are substituting the value into the second derivative and we're finding out whether it will be positive or negative. If it is positive, we know it's concave up. If it is negative, we know that it's concave down. So if it is concave up, it means it will be shaped this way and it means it has got a local minimum. So if this is the local minimum, obviously this will be the local maximum, but we have to prove it to them. So we discovered that this one is minimum, so let's find out what will this one be. So we obviously know it will be maximum, but let's prove it to them. We have to substitute this value into the second derivative and find out whether it will be positive or negative. So therefore we'll say the second derivative when x is negative 2 is equals to so this is gonna be 12 into negative 2 minus 30 and then this is gonna end up giving us so 12 into minus 2 is minus 24 so we're gonna have negative 24 minus 30 and this is gonna be negative 54 
so this gives us a negative value so we we'll literally tell them that the second derivative when x is negative 2 is negative less than 0 so therefore it means it will be concaved down so it will be concave down so if it's concave down it means this is gonna be the shape and if that is the shape it means it has a local maximum so this will be the highest point in that region so it means this is gonna be the local maximum and there we have it we have answered the question so that is how you answer it so if they say use the second derivative test you are just checking whether the second derivative at that point will be positive or negative and then from there you'll be able to determine the concavity and you'll be able to tell whether it's local minimum or local maximum so that is how we solve it so if you enjoyed this video please like the video and subscribe to my channel any questions you've got or any video you want me to make please comment below and i've provided the link to the prices of the tutorials and also to the playlist of cubic functions see you in the next video